What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and I have been slaving away on the PTS trying to find the absolute best sets that are going to potentially be meta in the upcoming Necrom DLC. There's one set in particular that is going to be meta in duels and it's going to ruin small group play and then the other set you can actually use in ESO right now. So without further ado, let's hop into it. All right, so this is my fourth time recording this. They've all been way, way too long. So I'm just going to quickly blow through this, try to keep this under 10 minutes in addition to the gameplay. So uh, here is my fifth or uh, fourth, I don't know, attempt at doing this. So we are a Breton for this class, guys. We're gonna be running the Smoke Bear Haunts. We're gonna be Vampire Stage 3. We're gonna be Atro on this build. Here's a look at the character sheet. Here's everything completely unbuffed. Uh, everything's kind of semi fully buffed uh, ish kind of I, I don't know here it is here's front bar stuff if you want to take a look here's back bar stuff if you want to take a look that's all fine and dandy but what we really care about are the sets that we are using and then the first build i want to show you guys is the dueling build and this is going to be meta across pretty much all dueling builds um the only snafu you're gonna run into are templars running purge templars are amazing this patch and duels and then um, running uh, against classes run Mars Bomb, but if you run Mars Bomb in uh, duels, you have a small PP. So set we're talking about Snake in the Stars, so this is going to give you recovery, magic spell damage, and then upon applying a major or minor debuff, you get 3200 Daedric damage that takes on them every single time they heal. This is a 50% uptime. Now, this is irresistible. Uh, you cannot buff this. Uh, this goes through wards as well. And you want to time this with your burst. So right before, like a few seconds before you go into your burst, you want to apply uh, some sort of major debuff. Doesn't matter what it is. On this build in particular, I'm using major susceptibility to apply major breach. And this is very, very oppressive and small scale. Now, if you are in open world, this is going to get a lot of diminishing returns because there's gonna be a lot more healing over time effects on people so this isn't really going to be noticed whatsoever but it is very noticeable in duels however this is the hardest hitting dot you can possibly put on any build ever and then this is not just applicable to the dragonite right i don't know if i mentioned that at the beginning of the video but you can literally slap these sets i'm about to show you guys on literally any single class some of the sets we're using to complement this set, however, is going to be the Perfected Master's Dual Wield. Now I'm running Maces on this, running Nernhone Disease, and we're also running Charge Shock. If you're not sure what this does, this adds more dot damage to your Swing Slashes attack, which you will be using on the build. Back bar, we're running Veteran's Ice Staff. You don't have to have the Perfected version of this. We're running Defending with a Berserker Enchantment. And this, every single time you cast Weakness to Elements, you apply Major Breach, and also you do this Beam Effect, which does hellacious damage over time. Next we're running Zons, this is probably one of the best 1v1 sets, this applies the most pressure in the entire game, and a good rule of thumb with this build is if you want to really really refine your burst toward the tail end of Zons, which is the last 5 seconds of it, this does last 10 seconds, that's when you want to apply Major Susceptibility or Ellie Drain, just so you can get the Star Venom debuff on your opponent, just so they can heal even less. Next we're running two pieces of trainee. This is Gallant's Change. This is going to give us our health and also our magica. And then for our mythic, I'm running Sea Serpent Squirrel. This is best as a slot on pretty much any single dueling build. When it comes to the armor weights, we're running three heavy, three light, one medium. When it comes to the enchantments, we're pretty much running tri stats on literally everything. The small pieces you can get away with just max mag on the big pieces. However, I would suggest running tri stats. When it comes to traits, you want to run as much impen as possible, even though it's a shitty trait, just because Nightblades are super notorious this patch and they hit just as hard as ever. When it comes to your enchantments on your jewelry, I'm running one infused cost reduction, running a weapon spell damage, bloodthirsty uh, snakes and stars ring, and also on my sea serpent skull, we're running this infused weapon spell damage as well. Hopping over into the skills, running venomous claw, shattering rocks, flames of oblivion, molten whip, raining slashes, and leap. Back bar, susceptibility, coag, resolving vigor. Volatile Armor, Cinder Storm, and also Temporal Guard. Alternatively, you can run Corrosive on your back bar as well. A neat little trick you can do uh, with the Sigigora skill line now, since the block, uh, when you swap bars, you no longer drop block. You can hold this and uh, swap bars. Now look, you have the Sigig Order Shield on both bars and you're not even having to block to have that active, which is uh, really, really cool. So the reason I'm going over this PTS dueling mode is because I want to host a PTS dueling tournament either this week or next week. I'm trying to spread the word. So if you guys have made it to this portion of the video, please, if you're on PCNA, EU, doesn't matter. This is all going to be on the PTS. Everyone is welcome to join. I will have a full rule set of what is banned and you know what is not allowed. Um, I'm still compiling that list. So I'll let you guys know in a future community post uh, what I decide. 
Champion points wise, we're running Focus Mending, Master Arms, Deadly Aim, and Ironclad. Hopping over into the Red Tree. Uh, we are running Relentlessness, Pain's Refuge, Sustained by Suffering, and also Balanced Vitality. Uh, this is not optimized. You can really change this up uh, how you want. Uh, it's just entirely up to you. Now hopping into the open world build, which you can run right now. Um, the champion points are going to be a little bit different. Um, our stats, everything's going to be the same. Same traits, all that yada yada. But the sets we're going to be using, guys, is you're, you're going to be running Play Break on your front bar. Bring Dual Wield Sword for this because I will be popping Corrosive for the duration of this. Bring Bait Trans, Perfected Ice Staff on the back bar. We're, we're running a one piece of training, which is going to be Gallant. And then the patch I've been talking about is a Zerbrite. While this is only 8600 on tooltip, you get this baby fully buffed. I'm not going to be able to show it to you here on the PTS because you still need continuous attack. And also, I need to get Sea Serpent Squirrel to proc. This is 12k on tooltip. Again, guys, I have a screenshot above of what you can get this up to in open world. It's, it hits really hard. So there are a few tactics to get this to proc. If you guys are not for sure what this does, each and every single time you deal damage with the damage over time effect, you apply a stack of Blight Seed. Upon reaching 20 stacks of Blight Seed, this will explode doing massive damage. So this is going to be a turn and burn DK build um, without going into too many other details because I've not been able to test this yet. I will be grinding a set of this on the live server um, when I do have the time sometime this week. So pretty much what you want to do is have a bunch of AoEs that's going to be able to proc these dots. Your talents ticks every single second. Eruption will tick every single second. Caltrops will tick every single second. So you build these stacks very, very quick. And one quick thing to note before we go through all the skills in depth is that if you use Rending Slashes, Rending Slashes actually generates four stacks of Blight Seed. And just with this skill alone, you can proc a Zero Blight in like less than four seconds. So. Hopping into the skills is going to be Deep Breath. We're going to be using this to our Burst, Leap, and Talons combo. We're running Fossilize and Burning Talons. Um, this, uh, this, instead of running Rapid Strikes, again, I just want to show you proof of concept how quickly you could proc the Blight Seed proc. You'll want to run Power Lash here. So this nice little trifecta is a good combo. Typically, you'll challenge your opponent. You'll get one Power Lash off. And then when they try to roll dodge, you'll fossilize them. If you catch them in the roll dodge, they will permanently keep the off balance status effect on them, allowing you to power lash them indefinitely until the status effect falls off. Then we're running Eruption because this takes every one second, like I said. Leap for a gap closing utility. Elemental susceptibility, I needed a set to run on the back bar and this will give you access to major breach on single target opponents. Notice every single thing we have here is pretty much AoE, so when you do come down to those moments where you need some single target damage, that's what this is here for. Our two heals coagulating and resolving vigor of volatile armor. And then Caltrops, this is going to apply a major breach to everyone and it also takes every one second, which is going to accumulate those stacks of Blight Seed very, very quickly. Back bar, I would suggest running Corrosive. I'm not sure why I had that on this build, but Corrosive is definitely a must on this build. Going into the champion points, literally every single champion point is the same, except we have changed Deadly Aim to Biting Auras. So I crammed a lot of information down your throat very, very quickly. I apologize for that. The original video was actually three times the length as this. And according to my analytics, you guys typically only watch five to six minutes of my videos anyway. So there's really no point in me making a 30 minute video on stuff on the PTS. If you want to see all of these PTS builds live and me theory crafting, come up with other builds, please like and sub to the channel, hit the notification icon. Otherwise, YouTube will not notify you of my content. I will be streaming five to six days a week. So if you guys want to be around to catch these builds in actions, please do so. And before I peace out, guys, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members. Guys, don't forget to like and sub. And this has been Horcrux and I'm out. Peace.